What's up, everybody? I'm, I'm Scott, Jason. And you are listening to Liquid Carnage. What's oh, up, buddy? Oh, man. House is closed, my friend. We are now officially homeowners. You are officially homeowners. You are Phoenicians. Yep, we're Phoenicians now. So now we're officially paying taxes uh, to help better schools, better roads. We're doing all that. We're, uh, we're making and a in, difference, pal. And in 360 short, short payments, that, that house will be That's all right. yours. That's right. That's right. And by then, we'll probably live in some slum that the house is worth like half of what we paid for it now. So. Well, that's just the way life goes, yeah. though, you know? Yeah. So, but. Especially when you're busy living that big city life. I know. Right there. But, you know, I, th- I think the market values stay pretty pretty solid where you're at. Yeah. The, I mean, from what my realtor told us is that because of its proximity to, like, Paradise Valley, it's not a. It's not in Paradise Valley, but it's in a neighborhood that's pretty well established and it's pretty stable. So she was saying, you know, that that we're probably not going to get hit like if a recession hits or the housing market goes to crap, you know, that we're not going to get hit as hard because it's still a, it's still a nice location. So, you know, but I think the bigger thing is it's our home and we want to have, you know, want to have a place where we like to come home and when, you know, people want to come see us in Phoenix. They'll have a place to stay. So, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So no, I think the burning question that our four listeners have and I have is, are you and Noreen going to be the couple that just move your stuff into that house or the, the couple that goes and buys this brand new stuff? Yeah, that's uh, for the house. <laughs> Hit us up on Facebook. And... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm what do you want to see Jason and Noreen do? This <laughs> on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. All that liquid carnage. We'll let you, the people, decide that one. And uh, whatever you decide, if it's not what Noreen wants, well, let's just go the other option. Yeah, I, I, I guess the way I would answer that question is I have a feeling that if people want to buy some really nice furniture at discount prices, um, there will be a sale going on at Kurtzworth Manor South. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I, think, I, I think that we're going to kind of lean toward a combination because I think that uh, it's um, – some so like some of the furniture we have in the apartment is definitely not going with us, so we'll be selling that. Yeah. And some of the, uh, you know, most of the furniture that's in Kingman, as long as we keep the house in Kingman and we have, you know, someone renting it, that will probably stay. Uh, but um, we will probably be doing a combination, but we'll definitely be buying some furniture. I think the bigger question is how much money are we going to be spending on fixing the backyard or doing things around the house, like, uh, you know, those kind of little improvements to make it, even more of a, a paradise for us. So that's kind of the question. Oh uh, yeah. All good questions to ask. Uh, all good questions to get answered and all questions that hopefully I get to help you answer over the next couple of years when I come down. Well, I think it's really funny because uh, you know, I don't know if our listeners know this cause they might be new to social media and some of the websites out there, but Amazon does a thing now where you can become friends with someone and then they can create a wish list. And uh-huh. we, we spent a whole morning at Starbucks yeah. doing that. Well, um, I've noticed that I've been getting these little notices from my friend Scott Kern where he wants floaters for a pool. One of them, I think, was a, a unicorn or I, I don't remember what it was, but there was a couple of, of uh, pool floats that you have uh, put on your wish list request. Oh, actually, just to clarify, I have not put the unicorn and the Millennium Falcon on my wish list. I placed them on our intern JP's wish list. Oh, okay. Oh, so you put it on his wish. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. I put it on his wish list. Okay. That way, uh, if anyone's looking to get him a schools out uh, first year teaching gift, uh, a Millennium Falcon pool float or a, another unicorn pool float would be perfect. Uh, for his pool. Well, th- this week was uh, Mother's Day week uh, weekend, and so uh, Noreen's parents came up to Phoenix. They hadn't been out of Tucson in a while, so we thought, well, let's get them, you know, weekend away. They can come up here, relax, and you know, just kind of get away from being, you know, because they're eighty six and eighty nine now, and so mm-hmm. you know, it, it's harder for them to kind of get out and do new things. So we brought them up, and. It was amazing the, the, the couple of things that we talked about during that time of changes, rapid changes that they are so like in awe over. One of them was um, Amazon. So Amazon, yeah. you know, you can pretty much buy anything off Amazon now. Not Literally, necessarily yeah. anything that's owned by Amazon. I mean, Amazon has just become the basically marketplace, online marketplace, yeah. right? It's a giant, it's an online, uh, mall. online mall. But for them, it's such a foreign concept. You, you, you basically like we were we were talking about ordering groceries from Walmart and then just having them deliver them, and they were in total like, 
I, I, there must be a point at an age of every person where you get to that point where, okay, this is as far technology wise as I'm going. I'm not going any yeah. further. And they yeah. are at the technology wise where they still own a membership or a delivery of the Tucson newspaper. Yeah, you know, I struggle with that too because my parents still have that. Uh, not the Tucson paper, but our local right. paper up uh-huh. here. You have to pay for an online subscription, and they still pay for the like the actual physical paper. Yeah, edition. no, they they pay for the 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 newspaper. The the, the concept that like they were talking about Sears, and how sad mm-hmm. they were that the Sears in their little area where they lived closed. And all I could think about is the days of those kind of. You know, like malls like the Woolworths, and the yeah, bins, the malls yeah. and and big monstrosity stores. It's coming to an end. It's just coming to an Is end. It Is it? I I don't think it will ever totally be gone. Oh man, I I think I think that while well, e-commerce is, is such a huge part of our world today, I, I think it's hard to ever replace some of those box stores like Walmart or Target or uh, even Kohl's, if you will, just because. We still have to get groceries, but some things you just need right now. You can't wait a day or two to go get, you know? Uh, Yeah, I guess so. Because Amazon, even, but even in the big cities, Scott, even in the big cities, I can order a package on a Friday and get it on Saturday. Well, yeah, but also, let's just be fair. You have an Amazon distribution center on the other side of the valley from you. So, no, but I mean, you have that option. What I mean is, is that as Amazon grows, it's only going to get easier and easier and easier to get products, you know, daily or, or, you know, within a day or two. And, you know, how many people, how many people who are over the age of 75, like they don't even have a smartphone, dude. They, they couldn't even, they couldn't even order Amazon if they wanted to. Every time we order something, Noreen has to order it for her and then have it shipped. Yeah. You know, but, you know, but it's like, it's like those things that are dying, like the newspapers. I was like, oh my gosh, I I can't even believe that people still read newspapers. But that's, but that's just right now. That's, you know, the 75 year olds and over like right now in in 10 to 15 years, uh, that'll be normal for them. You know, my parents are in their mid sixties and they have the smartphones. They have, you know, my mom is very adept at Amazon. Uh, she has the packages delivered daily between that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I have a hard time seeing uh, some of the big box stores ever going out of business. Like, I, I just think there's, there's especially in smaller, more rural areas, uh, because you can't get those you can't get those shipments from Amazon here that day. You know, I know you can pay for Prime; it could be here the next day by a certain time. But you know, like, like I said, you you have a certain type of sundry that you just need, and you know Walmart or Target or, or what have you has it, so you just have to go and get it. I don't have time to sit and wait. And, and and the ease of Amazon is not worth the ability to go get it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. And, you know, and the upside with Amazon, even Walmart dot com now, because Walmart dot com is basically another version of Amazon, right? Um, because you, you're allowed to smaller stores are allowed to sell through there. Uh, if it's a big purchase I want to buy, I take the time to research it between both to see who the price, and I price shop that way. And I, re- I figure if I'm researching it. I can buy it online because I'm going to find the best price that way. Do you think it'll ever get to a point where there will be basically Amazon and Walmart and their distribution, uh, you know, their distribution centers, and that's it? No, because uh, I can no, I can because, see I can see the, a the Sears. Basic, the basic white girls will never allow Target to go out of business. Like well, that. no, but I could see a Sears, for example, saying, you know what, it is too cost effective or cost um, ineffective for me to keep a store open. I'll just sell everything through Amazon. And if you want to yeah. buy a Sears product, you buy it through Amazon. Yeah, you know, a lot of those, a lot of those stores, we'll, we'll say the Coles, J.C. Penney's, uh, a lot of clothing stores like that have that ability to where they realize they can, they can sell online a whole lot more efficiently and and cheaper for that fact because they're not paying for real estate, you know, and and that that helps their bottom line. Having distribution centers versus having you know box stores. Uh, it, it is a huge cost saver to them, but on, on the other side, is different brands of clothes, even though they're the same size, fit fit your body a little bit differently. So I, I I don't think clothing stores in general will ever totally be out of out of style in persons because you still need to try them on, even though they have all those clubs now where you just try it on. You, if you don't like, it, you just send it back. 
there's that's still almost too much of a pain in the ass in our world right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like like it's helpful. It's great if you have the time. But sometimes you just have to go and see like what brands fit you how and just and, until you know what it is, then you can order online to your heart's content. Yeah. And I guess, you know, I guess I think about it. And, you know, when you think about a company like Walmart or Amazon, what they've created is not necessarily a retail super giant. It's the ability to sell any product registered with Amazon. They, they Like you said, they just are the mall, the digital mall that people can sell anything everywhere. So that means that the small entrepreneur can sell their individual products through Amazon. They don't have to have a storefront. They don't have to have, you know, employees and a register. They can do everything just doing it from home and then sell it through Amazon. So what Amazon created was just basically the huge, you know, super store digital mall. Yeah. I mean, that, that's really, they, they, they give you another outlet to buy, you know, buy what you need. And, and on top of that, they, they programmed algorithms in there to suggest other products you might want or need based on your previous views or purchases, which that's just pure genius because there is so much shit out there you don't know you need until you see it. You know, and, and I'm not trying to sound like like the typical like buyer, like, oh, my God, I didn't know I need that. But there's some things that you just don't know they exist until Amazon suggests suggest it. You do the research like actually, yeah, that'd be helpful in my daily life. What are your thoughts, though, about basically that algorithm already knowing something before you even thought of it well you know I, i'm a big believer that big brother's always watching and listening uh, and if anyone that's ever paid attention to to their timeline feeds on social media whether it be instagram or facebook or even twitter uh, if you talk about a certain product within 10 to 15 minutes if you're scrolling on through your social media that product will appear uh in an ad yeah uh, on your timeline and it is scary because we've sat in our office many times uh, four or five of us and had a discussion about different cameras uh, through Nikon or uh, even like dish detergents. And those things have popped up on our timelines. And, and the weird thing to me is that, you know, there was a time 30, 40 years ago that privacy was the most important thing that everyone wanted. Oh, yeah. They didn't want any, they didn't want big brother watching. They didn't want, you know, someone knowing what they liked and advertising toward those likes. And now it, it seems like everyone's just like, oh, this is so much easier. How wonderful is this that they're actually thinking for me and they know exactly what I'm thinking and what I'm, you know, we look at oh, yeah, Facebook it's... and you give all your information to Facebook and then Facebook takes all that information and they, you know, bind it with other pieces of information and oh, then yeah. marketing people know exactly what you want and how they do it. There was a time when that was like, a negative thing that was like something that was well, yeah. not approved or appreciated now seems normal that's one of those cases where you know all those user agreements you have to click on on your apple you know updates your, your samsung updates your phone updates and you're in there you're really clicking on the fact that you you are giving consent to let them listen in and let the government chime in whatever they they need into your phone to listen and see what you're doing i remember uh, seeing an interview with mark zuckerberg uh, the ceo of facebook years ago and it was it was in front of his computer, and they they did a stop slow mo uh, of the of the interview, and kind of focused on behind him on the computer. And he had a piece of tape over the camera, and over where the microphones were. Uh, that way, the government could not, or anyone couldn't, uh, hack into his computer and listen and see what he's doing. Wow. Yeah, and that that is the CEO of one of the biggest so uh, the biggest social media platform in the world. And let's be honest, I mean, Facebook is a perfect example because they have actually gotten in trouble for misuse of their algorithms. Yeah. So the very thing that he is afraid of losing for himself, he has no problem profiting from it on everybody else who uses Facebook. Ah, uh, hypocrisy at its finest. Yes. And, you know, there was an interview um, maybe last week sometime where one of the co-founders of Facebook, one of, he was basically one of the buddies – who he um, Zuckerberg went to college with, so he wasn't like the the Winklevoss one, one of the yeah one of those guys um, was basically he's no longer with the company, and I guess he's estranged from Facebook. And even he was saying that Facebook is at a point where they really need to get broken up because one person has way way too much power. You know, and, and, and if he's referring to their corporate structure, absolutely, uh, that's probably not wrong. You know, I I would imagine that's that's the same structure as most corporations, where you have your CEO, your CFO, COO, so on and so forth. But 
you know, I, is I I wonder is he referred to Mark Zuckerberg in that or is he... I think he was because the the even the interviewer had asked, "Well, are you and he still friends?" And he says, "No, we haven't been close in a couple of years, and I, I wish we would be close, but we're not." So I assume that when this guy sold off his shares, he probably didn't leave on the best of terms. Oh yeah, you know that's a possibility. Do you think the young people should care about that? Do you think young people should be caring about their information being sold to other, you know, to other marketing companies? And you know, I, I think they've been conditioned to understand that nowadays it's just a way of life. It is just what happens. Uh, your phone, you, these phones are basically small computers that everyone's attached to. If you don't have your phone, you freak out. I don't know one person that can't go without having their phone close to them just in yeah. case. And I, I think it's a case where people just accept that's one of the downsides of having a phone. They're going to be able to grab market research data from you and know how to appeal to you for what you need and see if you fall for it. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's an interesting outlook on the world. You go back to privacy because you're right. You know, 15, 20 years ago, we were all about privacy. We didn't want anybody listening in our phones. We didn't want any of that. That was before cell phones and the internet was still new. Now we have, you know, Siri's and Alexa's and the Google Homes where you can literally have, you, you literally have the government or anyone that are listening to you because you're asking questions all the time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I think that the, the real problem that we have is not necessarily that we've lost privacy, but I think that we don't realize what we've given up in the vein of, well, yeah, but now we're connected and now we, you know, we know what Bill's doing across the world and, and yeah, all that, it, you know, we don't know the take. impacts. And so people say, oh, well, it's not, it's not a bad thing. I mean, if everyone knows what I'm doing and I, I, you know, see pictures and stuff, I don't think that anyone really kind of acknowledges the risk or the concerns of losing that privacy actually means. Yeah. And I, I guess from my perspective, I don't really care that much. I've got four, um, Amazon Echoes in my house that I, that I connected for just surround sound stereo and whatever else. But I don't ever have any conversations in here that if, if they do use it for a listening device, I don't really care. Like, what are they going to hear me yelling at my dogs? Are they going to get an advanced listen of next week's liquid carnage? I mean, there are, I don't say enough here for them to re- for it to really make a difference. So to me, I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, w- we assume that no one is using that information to the detriment of us, right? We don't assume that someone is listening and is going to try to take what I say and, and use a, pr- a private conversation in a public way or arrest me for a, a crime that I haven't committed yet, but I've talked about it, right? We assume yeah. that all, everyone's intent is a good intent. Like our government wouldn't possibly use those listening devices to spy on us to find out more yeah. about us, right? Now, now, that being said, <laughs> if the government or Apple or Anchor or, or Podbean, whoever, you know, whatever systems are listening to us right now as we record this, if you really want us to be dedicated fans of your products for the rest of our lives, please help us promote liquid currency throughout the country. Um, we would love to see this see our ads randomly pop up on timelines for people all over the world. That's a good point. So we'll give us a listen. Help us help you. That's a good point, Scott, because you're right. That's one of those things where if, 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 if it gets promoted for use, good, for good, then no one has a problem with it. It's only in the rare cases when something bad happens, then everyone's up in arms. And I think that, exactly. that that's the biggest thing that we just have to be careful of is, you know, it, it's, always, it's always like that with anything, though, right? It, yeah. It's always oh, like yeah. that anything. If a doctor does a thousand surgeries and 999 of them are done perfectly and everything is good, but one of them turns out very, very bad, we instantly say, oh, he's a horrible doctor. Oh, she, you know, she did the wrong thing. Well, it go- you know, it goes back. It goes back to the age old adage. You could build a thousand bridges and never be called a bridge builder. But if you suck one cock, you're a cocksucker for life. Wow. That, uh, I think that should be on the um, executive producer's um, Twitter feed this week. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see what the notes are on that one. <laughs> if you want to hear the notes, see the notes on for Tom, our executive producer. Hit, hit him up at Liquid underscore EP on Twitter and Instagram. Do you think that a company like Amazon should be broken up? 
Why? Do you think a company could be too big that they control the market so there's no competition, there's no ability for anyone Can't, else to fit, to fit into the uh, the marketplace? I think it ever, if it ever got to that, yeah, you could probably talk about it. But the problem is with that thought process right now is that there still are literally thousands of other online stores. You can you don't have to buy anything everything through Amazon if you don't want to. Sure, Amazon owns Whole Foods now. Sure, they're putting their own uh, grocery stores into in the places, uh, and they're allowing other people to sell through their sell to them as their own stores. But I think as long as anyone can set up independently, any company and sell on the internet, uh, I don't think Amazon will ever have an issue, especially with something like competing with someone like Walmart. I, I think the minute you see Amazon and Walmart merge. Then I would I would start to think that they should start discussing antitrust laws. Yeah, because I'm trying to think when when the antitrust laws were kind of enacted in the 20s and 30s, you know, what were the precipitating factors to that that said, oh, okay, now we need antitrust laws. Well, wasn't that wasn't that like uh, Rockefeller and the yeah. oil companies? But but were they charging? Were they gouging people on prices, or were they, you know, eliminating the? Uh, I guess I think I think they were eliminating competition and gouging people. But if there, but is, I, but like, but if you can argue that you're doing a public good, and Amazon is providing a service, or Facebook is providing a service, how does, how would someone prove that you're having a monopoly, or how would someone prove? I, I don't. I think I think that's two different worlds because, in a, in a case like Amazon, you're selling things. You're a marketplace. So you, if you have very limited options because they keep buying up other own marketplaces, yeah, I get it. But in, in the case of Facebook and social media, if you're getting too big that nobody else wants to use your app to put duck lips or use a filter to make you look like a woman or a man or whatever else Snapchat's doing this week, then yeah, you can make an argument for it. But I don't think that I don't think those those rules or laws apply to social media yet because I don't think we're there. I don't think we're gonna be there. Mostly because the kids don't use Facebook much anymore. It's more of an older person's social media. It's going the way of MySpace. Hmm, interesting. So you think it'll naturally just fizzle out on its own? It'll it'll naturally it'll always be there, uh, just for the fact that the older generations got used to that, and I say older generations like my generation and above, because when MySpace went away, this is what took over. So all of our stuff is here, all of our pictures, all of our content. Now everything's gravitating toward Twitter and Instagram. Luckily for Facebook, they own Instagram, so. And I think they own Snapchat too, or so. They're, they're partial What's up? owners. WhatsApp. WhatsApp. And I'm not even sure what the hell WhatsApp is. But that, all things being equal, the younger generations are moving toward just Instagram and Twitter. So they might have a Facebook, but it's just to see what the grandparents are up to or what their aunts and uncles are. It's they're not using it for their own uh, juvenile, you know, activities. I don't use Facebook. I, I, I'm not on it very much. I mean, I, I post occasionally if something, you know, comes up, but most of the time I don't get on it. Um, but not because necessarily, you know, I have a problem with Facebook. I think it's more of, I just have a problem with, you know, constantly putting, Oh, I woke up today. Oh, this is what I look like after I took my shower. Oh, this is what I ate for breakfast. This is oh. And you, and you see, and I think you're looking at social media from an, from an older standpoint of, and when I say older, I mean just the way it used to be used, not how it's used now. Like I, I have a very, like my own personal rules on it are, are memes, the uh, food and my dogs. You don't get any of that crap for me. Um, like maybe special occasions. We went into this, here's some cool pictures of what happened, but you know, and, and I see that a lot through like our, like our memories and, and time hop. Like things you posted ten years ago, and that's back when it was like, yeah, woke up, have a hangover, that sucks. Or wouldn't it be cool if you could do this? But now it's a whole different ball game, you know. Maybe, I don't know. I, I, uh, I see so many of these young kids. That's how they make their money. I mean, when you have you know five million followers on Twitter or five million followers on Facebook, Instagram, any of those, like well, the Kendall Jenner and you know some of those you know, YouTube stars where it's like, they're making money just by constantly putting stuff out there and people just like soak it up. It's amazing. No, I have, I have friends who have kids that they'll ask you right away. How many followers on YouTube do you have? Cause that's how they judge you. So I, I think kids are going more toward YouTube and, and this thing called Twitch where 
you can re- record yourself playing video games and people can watch how you played those video games. Wow. Yeah. I, I had a friend whose son did that. Like he watched a certain guy who basically all he did was he recorded himself playing video games and the yeah. guy had 96 million followers or yeah. not, not, I mean, not well, followers, uh, views, like, like the views. Well, YouTube pays money. Once you get past a million or something, they pay money for you to do that. Oh, yeah. So, so even that, like well, you're not even producing anything and you're getting paid millions of dollars. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, our, 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 our friend, Julia's son, Jack, he's seven years old. He'll come into the office and show us all the, all the latest moves from Fortnite. I've never even seen fucking Fortnite. I, you know, I haven't he's either. Never played, he's never, and I don't have to. He's never played Fortnite, but he watches those videos of the victory dances. Oh, I got it. Okay, okay. So, so that's what that's what even younger kids are doing now. It's it's crazy to even think about. You know, it's like anything else though with big business. As long as you're doing a moral right or a moral good, or you're not fleecing people, no one cares, right? No one, no one cares yeah. that you are gobs and gobs of money. No one, no one has really cared. Let me think about Facebook. Facebook has been accused of of selling our information without our knowledge. And no one seems to care, right? No one seems yeah. to care because they want to post their pictures or, you know, find out whose birthday it was or whatever. You know, it only takes one bad thing to happen for a person's mind to change. So as long as you're not hurting us, we don't care. If you're hurting us, then we care and we instantly drop you. It's a very ambivalent society now. You have, and, and literally, if you watch the world, if you read the news, uh, the independent news sources, we are in a dumpster fire of a world right now with, with political corruption, with with scandals every time you turn around. But no one seems to care because of the social media. They've been taught that this news is fake news or this news is false news or this is what's going on. And there's so much mudslinging now. They just ignore it. They only consider it a crisis if it directly affects them or something. They oh, use. yeah. Like, I, I, I truly believe that sometimes some of the crises that people, you know, are saying, oh, we don't care about. It's only because they don't understand how it directly impacts them or maybe indirectly impacts them. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like once yeah. they figure once they learn, oh, this no, this direct like and I the way I find that out is how many people who just like live on social media and and then they say something inappropriate and they immediately cancel out of uh, social media because they realize, oh, my gosh, what I just said in the privacy of my friends or in the privacy of my life is now spread to everybody and everyone hates me now. So what do they do? They they cancel their account. You know, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So it, you're right. I mean, it's only when they finally notice what the impact is, in, is when, so get yeah. And, and maybe the job that, that our, you know, we need to do on our podcast is to open the minds of the impact, the impact of watching Game of Thrones for two straight weeks. You know, the impact. Uh, three, three, three weeks. The yeah, impact, yeah. yeah. The impact. Which, by the way. Yeah. The impact of paying a premium for, you know, something like shoes or, or electronic computer stuff, you know, maybe that's what our role is here on liquid carnage. Yeah. What are you, what, what is impactful for you? What is passionate for you? By the way, I did all that work on game of Thrones to get caught up. And it seems like now I wait once a week to be disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like any of those shows though. I think you just, once you get to the end, what else can you do? You know, it's going to end, yeah. you know, it's going to be over. There's no point in building up any suspense. There's no point in doing all that. See, once again, we don't really care about all that until it yeah. impacts us. I will openly admit though, last week's episode, uh, I was upset over the death of a fake animal, the dragon, and that Jon Snow did not say goodbye to ghost. The rest of it, I could really give a fuck yeah. about. Well, and, and this week's episode was just like, wow. Well, let, 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 yeah, you know, a bit psycho much. Well, you know they're they're calling it they're they're calling it probably with the worst episode, the lowest rated episode ever. But realistically, if you watch from season one, they've been foreshadowing this whole thing. Like, if you didn't see this thing coming, you have not been paying attention. Yeah. And maybe I recognize that because I watched it all in a basically a three week span, so it's all fresh in my head still. Yeah. But if you watch from day one and only watched it whenever it was brand new on HBO, yeah, I can see how you forget about this and be a little bit. Yeah, no, I'm with you. But I was not surprised at all. Well, well anyway, though, we got we got to wrap up the show. Um, so hit t- what social medias do you find yourself using more? Uh, are we on one of them? Is there one we should be on that's not named Twitch 
or, or YouTube. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. And hit up Tom, our executive EP, at Liquid underscore EP on Twitter and Instagram. And tell us what you liked about his swear truck gift of the week. And he's starting to use the Orville now, too, which is also rather nice. <laughs> I gotta watch that show. I still haven't watched it yet, but I, I gotta put that on my. You would, you will dig the Orville. Okay. All right, uh, I'm gonna get on my soapbox for one second. Uh, people, just because you don't see how things impact you, doesn't mean that they don't impact you. So use this as a, a an opportunity to open your eyes to things that might not impact you now, but will impact you, and and be okay with making changes in your life. I'm off my soapbox. Thank you. Wow. Should we have a picture on one of our social media platforms of, of you with like a tear rolling down your oh, eye? Your cheek? I don't know if you need that, but if like, you can get a picture of a soapbox, that'd be awesome. I will. I will. I will find a picture of a soap, an old timey soap. There we go, buddy. All right. Sounds good. So, all right, Jason, why don't you go ahead and take us hey, home? Thanks for listening, everybody. We really appreciate it. As always, uh, that was Scott. I am Jason. And if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage. <laughs>